So there's this really big concept in math called equivalent, or something called equivalency. So for, something, for two fractions to be equivalent, it's a very special thing. To, when, when things are equivalent, it means that the relationship between the numerator and the denominator is the same. The relationship between the numerator and the denominator is the same. That's what, at its core, equivalency actually means. Now, that's a lot easier to do than it is to talk about. The, de the definition is quite difficult. It's really best shown with an example. So things are equivalent when they have the same relationship between top and bottom. One half is equivalent to many things. One of the things it's equivalent to is two-fourths. Now, why is that? I can unpack that. So down here, one half and, and two-fourths are equivalent because if I took this circle and I had one half of it, I shaded in one half of that circle, and I took a circle, and I had fourths for this one, fourths, now it's in fourths, and I shaded in two of those, they would be equivalent. These would be the same thing, just viewed, just viewed in a slightly different light. Rather than saying halves, one part out of two, this is two parts out of four. Now if you notice, the relationship between top and bottom is the same, between numerator and denominator is the same. The denominator is twice what the, what the numerator is, and the denominator in two-fourths is also twice what the numerator is. That's why they're equivalent. The relationship between top and bottom is the same, and they can be, and they can be visually represented in the same way. So, in order, to, in order to, determine, to determine equivalency, we often do lines. So we say, okay, write two equivalent fractions for three fourths. I can say, okay, well, three fourths can also be written as, as three times two and four times two, which is six eighths. If I wanted to, I could write six eighths. I could also write it as, why not? I can do five. Three times five is 15. Four times five is 20. I could have also done times two. I could have done times seven. I could have done times 10. I could have done times a million. They all would have been the same. The relationship between the top and bottom remains the same. Now, there's also negative examples, or not negative examples, there's um, non-examples. For instance, you might get a problem that says, is 6 eighths equivalent to, I don't know, 15 sixteenths? Are they equivalent? Let's find out. 8 times 2 will be 16, but 6 times 2 will not be 15. These are therefore not equivalent. The answer will be no. 6 eighths and 15 sixteenths are not equivalent. Now, the question is, okay, what would be equivalent? If I have just given this, it says 6, eight, six eighths is equivalent to what over 16? And this is the big skill that we use a lot when we come to fractions. 8 times 2 was still 16, that hasn't changed. The rule in mathematics, and this applies to pretty much every discipline of the mathematics, whatever you do to one side, you must do the other. Whatever you do to the top, you must do the bottom. You must have equality in all things. So if I did times 2 to the bottom, I have to do times 2 to the top as well in order to keep it equivalent, in order to keep it equal. 6 times 2 will be 12, like so. So 6 eighths and 12 sixteenths are, in fact, the same. Now, I could also go in reverse. This is called simplifying. If you want to look at a video for simplification, I have another one on my YouTube channel. If I wanted to simplify, it means I would divide top and bottom by the same thing. In order to get up, I multiply by the same thing. So in order to get down, I divide by the same thing. What could I divide both 12 and 16 by? Well, I could do them both by 2. I would get 6 eighths. This does not mean it's in simplest form. If I could divide this again by 2, that would get 3 fourths. This would be what's called simplest form. In order to shortcut that, I could just divide by what we call the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor, and if you want to find that, there's another video for that, if the greatest common factor of 12 and 16 is going to be 4. So I can divide both top and bottom by 4, and I will get 3 fourths. This will be the simplest form of 12 sixteenths. 
That's all about equivalency. We use this a lot in mathematics. We use a lot in fractions. They'll be coming down the line in, in adding and dividing and subtracting. Thanks.